Okay, so let's go back to uh, giving Patrick Egan a call. Patrick Egan is out on the West Coast, so he, like I said, just got home from work. He's probably finished his Cheerios by now, and uh, we'll see if he's available. Some of the topics right now, you know, we go to suasnews.com for our news feed at the website, and uh, he picked up, but just real quick, um, suasnews.com, they're a worldwide resource. They cover uh, unmanned aircraft news, development stories all over the world. They have uh, Gary Mortimer down in South Africa, uh, Patrick Egan's out on the West Coast in San Francisco. Um, I don't know if there's a more comprehensive resource as far as uh, pulling in all the different stories, not just consumer stuff, but military, uh, agency work, that type of thing. So, Patrick, how are you doing tonight? Can you hear me okay? I'm doing good. I had to do a venue change as we were having bandwidth issues. So, ah. Sorry about that, but, uh, you know. Um, it's technology. live. It's the Internet, first of all, so we have right. some leeway. Well, and, uh, you know, technology is great when it's working. That's right. So thank you for being here again. Uh, you know, I really appreciate the people that set aside time in their schedules, especially everybody involved in multirotors somehow seem to be the most type A, too ambitious. Everybody's burning the candle on both ends. So I appreciate it when people set aside time to speak with us. Um, what do we have in the world of SUAS news this week? Well, there's all kinds of stuff going on. There's, there's, uh, you know, um, there's a lot of different things happening. One of the good, uh, good things that was happening is with the UGCS company, yes. uh, and they've come up with a, um, well, they've come come up with a ADSB in and out uh, transponder. Yes, and uh, it actually they went out and tested it, and uh, they were uh, able to be seen. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, the equipment might be a little bit um, clunky. Let's say, yeah, whatever. But you know, uh, proof of concept. It's been done, and I think that uh, you know they're kind of leading away on this one. But I, I have been uh, getting other emails from other companies that are like, hey, you know, we're coming up with uh, units that will go on these, let's say, consumer uh, grade hobby or professional drones. So I, right. I hey, think we're Patrick, Patrick, sorry to interrupt you. Just to speak real quickly to what ADSB is. ADSB is a transponder which goes on the helicopter. It's a piece of equipment. And what it does is it gets pinged by air traffic control services. It also gets pinged by other aircraft, which means other aircraft are putting out a signal and this thing is responding saying, this is who I am, this is where I am, and this is my altitude. And by repeatedly pinging each other's uh, transponders, the equipment is able to get a sense of where everybody is, where they're going, and it develops a sense of potential conflicts. Now that's a future uh, development or a future uh, feature that would be worked into this, but initially what UGCS has demonstrated is that this transponder can be mounted on a small helicopter and it can be seen by ATC while it's in flight. And we should also mention that the information it was pinging, the information it was putting out that was picked up by ATC during the flight was actually being pulled from the flight control system, which was a DJI A2. So the A2 is providing GPS coordinates, altitudes, uh, other information that the developers of this product were uh, you know, interested in uh, sending out. And so what's significant is that this is an ATC viewable, or it's, it's, it makes the helicopter capable of being viewed by ATC radar throughout the flight. So go ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt, but I just thought I'd give a little perspective as to what ADSB is. No, and I, I think that's good. It's and it uh, the acronym because we're like a, a definite acronym. Uh, yeah, to I got to hear it. Say it. <laughs> automatic dependent surveillance broadcast. Excellent. And uh, there's also there's a mandate for it in certain airspaces out in uh, 2020, mm -hmm. but it's not mandatory now. Right, not all air, not all full scale aircraft have it yet. It's a, it's the next generation of transponders, traffic collision avoidance systems. ADSB is the buzzword for the next gen, but it's significant that it's flown on a small aircraft. Using actually also another important point that makes it significant, it was powered by the flight batteries, the 6S packs that were being used to power the helicopter. So, uh, what people saw as um, bottlenecks for getting this technology incorporated into our our smaller size, our SUAS class of vehicles, these bottlenecks were, it's gonna to be too big, it's gonna be power hungry, and uh, the signal may interfere 
in the process of blipping out all of this information, it might interfere with the flight control system itself. And they saw that that wasn't the case. So it's significant. It is significant. And um, I think the thing is with that, too, is there's a lot of uh, different hurdles with mm -hmm. this technology as it's been um, introduced and talked about. I, I first became aware of it during the small UAS arc. Right. Uh, um, and there were somebody came in and talked about it because, you know, the technology has actually been around for a long time. And as you'd mentioned, it's part of the next gen thing. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about it during the arc, you know, hey, we could use this for sensitive void or, you know, detecting where these are. And then at that time, they were separate receivers or sep and separate squawkers for the two different freaks, one GA uh, squawks at one freak and, com and the 121-135 uh, the 131, squawk at a different freak and then all the problems and we kind mm -hmm. of left it there. But that's all changing because now one unit can squawk in both freaks and the promise is really good. Uh, the only thing is, the only the only Debbie Downer part of it is there is no current public or plan for the FAA to, uh, um, let's say, support a public algorithm for detect or set, detect and avoid. Right. But I think if you keep, uh, like I said, more of these companies come up with this technology and say, hey, you know what? Here it is. It's you know something that looks like you know this, and it right. doesn't use a lot of power. Right. I think there there'll be uh, let's say. Might be a, a rush to adopt it. Right. Maybe it's something that um, might need not need to be. Well, you know, it might not need a mandate. Exactly, or certified for installation on the aircraft. There's a lot of variables there, but uh, you know. Anyway, I think it's a good thing overall. Yeah. No. Absolutely. It certainly it certainly shows that a lot of these hurdles that have been uh, whoever dreamed them up in the first place, it it enables beyond line of sight operations for small. UAS, which is something that, I mean, me personally, I didn't think we were going to see the potential for that for at least a few more years, and here they are doing it. So, you know, kudos to them for putting it together. I just think it's awesome that they pulled the information, the information that was being displayed via the transponder to ATC was actually being pulled from inside of the A2 flight control system. It's not like they had their own data generator on board. They were actually pulling it from the system that was controlling the helicopter using the helicopter's batteries which I think is amazing because I would have never dreamed that we'd be doing that today. I, I thought we were at least a few years away from that. Well, and I, I would agree. And I would also say that's kind of amazing. You're right. You know, it's coming right out of the autopilot. Uh, that's pretty cool. It's pretty impressive. So I think, uh, you know, stay tuned. I think that there, well, let me just say that. I think that there are people that understand and are investing in the, in the software and hardware mm -hmm. to make the beyond visual line of sight, let's say, uh, solutions available because really everybody sees that. I mean, really, you know, when you, when you start talking about the, uh, you know, let's say bucket of gold at the end of the rainbow for agriculture or whatever, really those are beyond visual line of sight operations. Right. So, all right. So what's next? What else are we talking about this week? There's some rumors going around that seem to be picking up steam. Well, there are, there's, dude, <laughs> <laughs> let's get, come on, let's go down the rabbit hole. Go with me. Come on. It's tempting. It's, it's not that it's a new rumor. It's just that it's taking on a more formal tone that seems to be giving it credibility. I mean, we're, let's, let's go there. Come on. Okay. Well, you know, I hear it from uh, all different sides, you know, I'm hearing one that, uh, you know, people don't think the rule's going to come out for a long time, right. another year. And then there's other people that say, no, no, you know, the the this D DC insiders are saying that uh, Congress is pushing the FAA so hard that they have to come out with something. Right. Then you have people going, oh, you know, there's not even going to be a license requirement for commercial operations. I don't believe that for two seconds. So the rumor we're talking about is that uh, people are saying that right now the FAA could be within a few months of releasing a draft regulation that will allow commercial operations. So it's going to be an SUAS commercial operating certificate. So people are talking about middle of this year, uh, maybe May or June at the earliest, and that it would enable uh, commercial small unmanned aircraft ops like you see here, but without the 333 exemption, without the pilot's license, um, who knows? But yeah, Scott's eyes are like, wow. Uh, Scott, like a lot of us, have these things sitting on shelves collecting dust ever since the FAA started biting 
they were barking for a long time, but they started biting. And so everyone was like, all right, maybe we'll hold off for a little while. But yeah, so what have you heard? That's, that's what I've heard, that it's middle of the year, no, no more 333 process. It's actually a license where it's, you know, you go sit for a class, you do the operating experience, whatever, you demonstrate proficiency, and you're good to go. To that effect, to that effect. Don't quote me on that. I think there's got to be some sort of pilot's license because you have to be able to uh, do enforcement action on people. Um, right. Well, it's so going to be a certain, it's going to be, they don't call it, the FAA doesn't call a pilot's license a license. They call it a, uh, a certificate. Certificate, right. So there's going to be a certificate. You're going to have to have the little credit card looking thing with Orville and Wilbur Wright's uh, image on it. And it's going to probably say SUAS, commercial operator, or operator certificate with a commercial endorsement or something. That's the way they do things. So, um, well, it's a yeah, carrot I mean, stick thing, you know. Hey, you got a little carrot. You can go out and make a plea. <laughs> and, uh, you know, as soon as you step out of line, we, uh, we beat upon you. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I mean, I'm, you know, you want my personal opinion? No. I'm going to. Okay. No, I don't want your personal opinion. <laughs> we, okay. Come on. We could all be as cynical as we want to be. But it's just interesting that, you know, there's been rumors over the years. This particular rumor... Um, is got a little bit of a different. Uh, it's got a little bit of a different handle on it, which is making it a little more interesting than past rumors. Well, let me just say this: I, I forget it was a high-ranking official from the uh, FAA, right? You know, testified last June uh, to Congress, and they pretty much they tried to pin him down when we want a date, and he said, you know. Oh, by June of next year, it's going to be out. And I really, uh, somebody's going to be in the hot seat if it doesn't happen. Okay. So I'm going to say, you know, okay, it should happen. Now, I know that, you know, the White House had it and they were uh, horsing around with it. And then supposedly I heard it got kicked out. Hmm. So it might be getting worked on. I'm, I'm going with June. I mean, okay. I don't know. I mean, if this guy uh, that guaranteed Congress that it was coming out by June, you know, it doesn't pan out. Somebody, somebody's in deep doo-doo. So. I'm going to start lining up clients. That's how confident I am. Exactly. And uh, I, I agree. I'm, I'm kind of doing the same deal. I'm going to kind of position myself for the June thing uh, and, and other people. Now, the registration thing, I'm really, I got to be honest with you, I, I don't like the registration thing at all. Yeah. That was another news story from the week. Yeah. We, we, I made comments on behalf of the R Kappa right. uh, that were at SUS News if you want to read them. Some people said that, um, you know, there was kind of a lull uh, in my commentary for a while, and they thought maybe I was calming down. And then after that piece, they were like, wow, you're getting you turned up the heat again. Um, you know, I, I think we need to step back and take an objective look at what's going on and say, hey, do we want to be a part of this? The drone registration thing is registering people and not drones. I don't personally, I don't like to be on lists. Uh, yeah. I spent a lot of time on lists, but uh, now the official, um, you know. Yeah, you know what? I've got a lot of airplanes. I've got helicopters. If they were to, I'd have to hire an assistant just to register all my aircraft, my aircraft, if uh, they were to register aircraft. Um, I mean, there'd be, there'd be legions of people looking for assistance in uh, Craigslist just to register all these individual aircraft. I don't know if there was any other way to do it. I hate the process. I hate the concept. I hate the fact that the FAA got themselves backed into a corner where they had no other choice but to do something, and then it ended up being that registration process. But, you know, let's not even go there. We've, we've beaten that one to death. What was the last thing? You had said there was a third thing that you thought was important that you wanted to talk about. It was different from what I had uh, on my list. But what were you, um, what was it that you wanted to bring up? Okay. So, yeah, you know, I mean, you know that the uh, Small Unmanned Systems Business Expo is yes. right around the corner. April. April, April, end of April in San Francisco, and it's shaping up to be another barn burner. We just confirmed uh, Mr. Tad McGear. And uh, people that don't know who Tad McGear is, he basically came up with uh, Aerosond and um, Scan Eagle. He started in situ with a couple of other guys. And uh, this guy is, he'd probably hate it if he heard me say this, but uh, some people consider him to be like the Steve Jobs of drones. This guy's been doing it forever. He did the first unmanned transatlantic flight in 1998. Wow. He's got a whole bunch of firsts under his belt. His new aircraft, the Flex Rotor, uh, there's some, some videos, 
very impressive. It's a VTOL aircraft. Mm -hmm. uh, the tail actually splits mm -hmm. into uh, four segments, and it lands on the tail. It's, it's very impressive. Hmm. So uh, people should check that out, aerovale.com. He's going to speak. We got some other good people. We got uh, NASA, um, people from uh, USDA. Right. We got uh, somebody from the uh, Cinematographers Guild okay. out of Los Angeles. So that that's going to be really good. Uh, I you know I was I did tweet out this. If you can't get the time off of work, you may want to think about quitting your job. Okay, I'll remember. I'll I'll take that into consideration. Uh, we'll post a link to your uh, website for that show. We'll post a link to the person that you just mentioned. I forgot his name was a little. Uh, what was his name again? Tad McGear. Tad McGear. We'll post a link to his uh, information at the, the website and also in the text below the YouTube viewing window. Is there anything else? We're going to wrap it up, and Scott's going to come out and do his safety briefing if, uh, if you don't have anything else to add. No, that's about it. Um, we were going to talk about my, my bio, but uh, really the only thing that's important is that I have drone in my Twitter handle. You know. That qualifies me as an expert. <laughs> You know, that's, you know, if there's one thing that I've come to admire, it is the self-certification process for experts on Twitter simply by having drone in your uh, Twitter handle. Now, I have two Twitter handles. Only one has drone in it. So does that qualify me more or less in the scheme of things? Where, where do I fall on the totem pole if I have two different Twitter handles and only one has drone in the name? I'm going with loser, man. Oh, God. <laughs> But, you know, and we, I suppose we, I suppose my invitation to speak at your conference is in the mail. I'll look for that next week. But exactly. that's okay. Well, it's all right, that, Patrick. You know, it's not only Twitter handles. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, he never he never lets us down. Four ninety nine and a self addressed stamp down. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for making time for us. The next show is next Wednesday, so pencil us in, okay? We'll find something else to talk about. We're not doing every other week after this episode. We're going to have next week, and then the next show will resume the bi-weekly schedule after that. I think it's February 10th. So if you have time for us next week, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you next Wednesday night, okay? Sounds good. Uh, you know, keep the right side in the air and all the rest of that. Talk to you later. Yes. Thanks, Patrick. Have a good night. Bye-bye.